So one of the unique aspects of the Cambridge education is attending supervisions. And a supervision would take place between a supervisor and one to three students. And supervisions can take on a number of different structures. Uh, within the natural sciences, often we'll discuss what was covered in the lectures, as well as discuss an essay that was written on a certain prompt. In math, for example, you might have a problem set given to you the week before, and as part of the supervision, you would work through different questions that were posed from that problem set. So as the supervision begins, you'll often have uh, some basic questions that maybe you'd want to get covered. So perhaps you have a question about um, some specific figure that was given in the lecture notes. Um, we also then would ask for some really in-depth questions. I think that's a great opportunity to, to discuss something and really take the extra time that the lecture wouldn't really have the opportunity to do. Um, we also will then go through and look at the essays that were written. So how long would a typical essay say take to write? Roughly four, three to four hours, I would say. So um, we take a while to go over the lecture notes and clarify the concepts behind answering the question and then plan the essay, its structure and how you want it to flow and then writing in about an hour, which is what we're expected of in exams. And as, as a supervisor, we'll have read the essays and we'll give them back the next week with verbal feedback oftentimes. Um, maybe some structural ideas or you know, to clarify a few uh, experimental points that maybe weren't quite right. And all building towards um, being ready for the exams that will take place in the, in the spring, um, actually in the summer. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, what would you say is a good supervisor? What are you looking for in a supervisor? Um, well, supervisors tend to be experts in the topics you're covering in your lectures. So they have a really in-depth understanding of what you're learning about. And so they can explain in a way that shows that they really want you to understand in the way that they understand, yeah. which is what I look for the most. And we often are looking for students who are willing to sort of get engaged with the questions and to really come prepared and be willing to discuss. Um, and I think that's a, it's a great opportunity uh, and it's a really unique opportunity uh, to sit down in a small group and really battle with some questions. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, students often really reflect back on their education here and this comes up as really the highlight uh, of how they were able to learn. Yeah, becoming comfortable talking about academic concepts is something that I really value from the supervision system. So thank you for the essay. It was very well written, and as you'll see in my comments, um, I really think you've done some great work on this, and you've really taken on board a lot of the comments that we've previously been discussing. Um, one of the keys, I thought the introduction was very strong. You really set the question. You were ready to go. The, uh, the use of headings was excellent again, um, but the real, the, the real aspect of this that, that really stood out to me was you really went through experimentally, and you marched through the experiments, and you, you really highlighted what the experiments were showing and how they were done. Um, and I think overall that came through and that really shows an understanding of the subject. Um, I thought when you got to your conclusion, um, you summarized it quite well. You'd used a lot, of, um, a lot of examples from different systems as well and that really came through. So if I was marking something like this in the exam, I would say it would probably be a mid first. Um, I think if you did want to show a little bit more improvement, some more diagrams would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe uh, another example from a non-vertebrate system would have actually really benefited. Um, but overall, I think, you know, producing something like this in the exam would really be top quality. So I, wasn't, I was quite clear about how the primary cells were formed. Yeah. Less clear about how the secondary cells ah. came as a result of that. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at how the primary cell forms. So if you recall, there was a signal and receptor interaction. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what those signals and receptors were named? Um, was it the... Lin 3 signal Good. and the LET 23 Exactly. Yeah. And just as a quick aside, do you remember how they might have found those uh, ligand receptor interactions? Um, could they have done it by a genetic screen to... Excellent. Yeah. Good. So you remember in C. elegans, as in Drosophila oftentimes, and yeast, mm -hmm. we're going to use a lot of genetic screens. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the themes you've seen throughout the course. Yeah. Right? So it wasn't just from the development lectures, but also from the previous lectures. So you identify it by the phenotype type when it's not top. Bingo, bingo. So here they would have known that they lost the primary cell forming, which then would result um, in a loss of the structure. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we take that same principle, what kind of theories might you come up with for the secondary cell if you know these signals are, are coming from a cell that's directly above the primary cell? Well, it could be the same kind of signals, but less. Because... Good. Yeah. So you remember there was less, and then there was this idea of positive feedback. 
All right, so if you remember then as we go forward here, you could see that a positive feedback might create a scenario where the cell might receive more information or less information. Mm -hmm. And then there was these interactions between the cells. They were able to communicate, right? This group of cells. And do you remember um, how that might have taken place then? What, what, that, what that mechanism might be called? Uh, lateral inhibition. Good. And, and what does that mean in your own words? Um, just so that there's interactions between the cells that means that there's a decision made in one Good. that determines the, the cell fate of... Good. And that, there, that there's an inhibitory, so you're blocking the pathway, yeah. which will then mean they're going to differentiate into slightly different cells. Mm -hmm. And so that's the principle that you'd then be reaching in order to get these secondary cells forming. And do you remember what the, the real take-home message? I think the lecture may have, have sped through this a bit. What were they really trying to, to point out? Why do you need all these different mechanisms? Is it so there's a stable decision about cell fate? Exactly. Yeah. You want to make, you know, absolutely sure you have one primary cell. Because you saw in the examples from the genetic screen that you mentioned that when you have multiple primary cells, you get these very messed up phenotypes. Good.